This is the burden that we have to study more and more carefully these days. If we are looking for solutions to problems, there is no use looking where problems are being made and never solved. If we want to find out how to survive, we must gradually discover what is threatening our survival and do what we can to correct it. Somewhere within the individual, if he digs deeply into himself, there is a mysterious faculty that perhaps we can call common sense. It is in, in likelihood the basic qualities of mind. It is that intellection which has been given to all of us by a power greater than ourselves. The mind is an instrument to be used, not to be abused. Its uses must always solve something. Its abuses must always tear down something. Now, the mind being a mysterious instrument which no one has been able to accurately define, and our higher professionals do not even attempt it, because to do so they would be forced to examine causes and factors they wish to ignore. But the mind remains as the one saving hope in this particular emergency. Somewhere within each individual is a kind of solutional power which should be cultivated instead of inhibited. The moment we find that a child has a mind to think with, we should help it to think with that mind. Thinking is very different from accepting somebody else's thoughts. Thinking is not to be gained simply by reading a textbook and agreeing with the author, or, for that matter, disagreeing with the author. The real fact of the matter is that every effort today is made to prevent the actual active positive use of the mind. It is being cultured to become an instrument. We are trying to make the mind into a robot. We want to have a mind that will serve uh, situations that are essentially false. We want a mind that will agree with the prevailing policy, even though that policy is going nowhere. Actually, therefore, each of us must become capable of using the mind with which we have been endowed by a life greater than our own. Actually, the tendency to break away in, uh, uh, from the conventional and the conservative is growing every day. We are more and more aware that we are the victims of something that is not right. We realize as we stand closer and closer to the possible uh, wars of the worlds that have been well dramatized in motion pictures, we know something is wrong or these conditions would not and could not exist. They do not exist because humanity as a group wants them, or that they serve humanity in any way. They have continued because small groups of ambitious persons want to play chess with the human destiny. They are not concerned with trying to solve problems. They are inclined only to uh, consider the possibility of further advancements in some highly specialized structure of munitional warfare. They are interested only in digging in and finding more abstract theories which they can turn to the uh, advantage of limited groups. Now these minds have formed a partnership, or if they haven't formed it, it has occurred naturally, with other walks of life which feed into this monopoly. This, uh, these other walks of life, for example, example, one of them is the psychosis of wealth. They have tried to make every human being subservient to a colossal ignorance simply by offering a reward. They have uh, taken the attitude that if we will follow the leadership of the self-appointed leaders, they will help to make us rich, will help to make us famous, and will help us to become dyspeptics 
or in one way or another destroy the body in which we live. Actually, we are told that if we think for ourselves, we will be poor. If we think as we are told to think by the elect, we may retire as vice presidents of some monopoly and have a grandfather's clock presented to us in recognition of 45 years of faithful service. Uh, my uncle got one of those clocks. <laughs> but these uh, years of faithful service, what did it do to him? It destroyed in him the entire structure of individual creativeness. He did what he was told. He went to office every day. He followed the rules exactly. He had a fair living and was able to support his family. And he passed out of this life at the end of 83 years without actually having thought anything through for himself. He had no idea of the kind of world he lived in. And for him, pleasure and success was to be able to take a ride in a sailboat. Now, this is what has been gradually happening. The seal sailboat has now become a yacht, a land yacht, and living has now gone into the multiple figures so that the elite can hardly get by on a million dollars a year. But with all this money, what is being solved? Nothing. The individual in his wealth goes down to sickness and death, and the more money he has, the more extravagant his death will be. <laughs> so we are in a, in a bind. And those who are supposed to get us out of the bind are getting us further into it. So the problem arises that more and more there are rebellions, revolts, revolutions, in which individuals are tired of the way we are mistreated by those who are pretending to be our superiors. We are not referring now to political superiors. We are not referring to those who become dictators or to those rag ragged and rugged generals who lead bandits through the hinterland. We are re referring more directly to the type of leadership which under one guise or another prevents us from growing out of the disasters which have been created for us. Now, they will almost always say, of course, that we made these disasters for ourselves. There was no reason why we couldn't have lived well in spite of the upper crust with its eternal problems. The answer to the thing is it doesn't work quite like that. The moment we fail to conform, we are penalized. It is not a case of where we are better off by trying to be ourselves. We are told, and it is proven to us, that if we break the pattern, if we do not follow the mistakes of the ages, we will be in tragic conditions now, and there will be no remedy. In other words, if we want to go out and beg for world peace, this is a kind of treason for which we will be penalized not only by the leaders but by those whom they have indoctrinated right down to members of our own families. The whole situation is out of hand. But inside of us there is still this humanity. There is a power inside of the person which is the only possible solution to the problem. Each child coming into the world should regard it as an inalienable right that he has the privilege and the right and the inalienable need to become a person, to think, to use the faculties that he has gained stress in other previous embodiments. Certainly he comes into the world capable of a contribution. But in order to make that contribution, he must now go through an elaborate process of having his individuality killed and being forced to recognize that individuality is dangerous to all of the material advantages which he hopes to gain from life. There was one comforting thought, however, and that is that these advantages that he is suffering so much to maintain are themselves failing, 
and by degrees every advantage